السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today إن شاء الله we will be finishing the last part of سورة سورة الملك Surah Tabarak. So uh, we stopped last time on Ayah 24. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa alladhi dhara'akum fil ardi wa ilayhi tuhsharoon. Say, he is the one who has spread you throughout, throughout the earth. And to him, you will be gathered. So the word "dhara'akum" means uh, to to spread you uh, to spread you out in earth. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created uh, people on this earth to serve, to worship Him, and then everyone is going to go back to Him. So each one who walks on the this the surface of this earth since Adam alayhi salam until today and until the day after there is no doubt that there will be a day of judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to get everybody back to him and it's of the um, uh, basics of uh, iman is to believe in the day after. So those people who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who belied the, the uh, uh, messengers, uh, who would uh, uh, get uh, unlawful money, uh, who would uh, oppress people, who would do those things, those people have been veiled from the idea that they are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is reminding people, Everyone is going to, to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this to, to the non-believers, they said, وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ and they say, when is the promise? If you should be truthful. And this is actually a, a satiric question that they are mocking Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are saying, if you are truthful and if you know that there will be a day of judgment as you say, as you claim, then when will that day be? Now, Let's stop for a minute here and ask ourselves, are we ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We all know that there, there, no one on this, uh, no one who is uh, going to uh, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah will talk to him without any without any messenger, without any angel, without just one to one. So just get ready for this standing, for this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are we going to say to him? Are we going to say, oh, yeah, Allah, we, we, uh, we miss, we are longing to meeting you. We are, we, we uh, lived our life fearing you. Just we want to, to meet you and you, you are pleased with us. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu says, some people would meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and while they are there, they, the, the flesh of their faces would drop because of, uh, um, uh, because of the type, because of the many sins that they have done in their lives. 
they would be there frightened. They would be there scared. In dunya, if someone, uh, if someone noticed and that uh, so-and-so person is doing something uh, that he should not be doing it. And that so-and-so person realized that someone saw him, he would feel so ashamed. He would be uh, so, uh, um, uh, so it would be so bad for him to just to look him into the eye. It would be, he will feel so humiliated. Now, what about standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who knows everything? Nothing conceals from him. Nothing, whatever it is, whether it's a speak of khair or a speak of evil, everything he knows, everything is registered in the record. That leaves nothing small or big except that this record has it. So when we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not gonna, going to take our money with it, our wealth, our children, our positions, our uh, uh, jobs, nothing. We're going to take with us our deeds. We're going to take with us our fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to take with us the uh, uh, what we used to, to uh, just think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching us, that he is with us. We're not taking the songs we love to hear, the, the uh, um, movies we love to watch, or we don't waste time. Time is precious. We have to, to take advantage of every single second in our life to use it in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So use the time now. Use the time while you are still having, while you are still having a chance, while you are still living. Because once, once death comes, then khalas, no delay. You still, you, you still have time now to turn away from your sins, to repent and to turn to God. Do it, do it before it's too late. So all of us are going to be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows everything that we have done everything that we have thought of, everything that we have looked at, everything that we have heard, everything that, all places that we have gone to. Ya Allah, we want you to be pleased with us. So Ya Muhammad, when they ask you, when is this meeting? When is the hour? When are you when is this promise going to be fulfilled? Just say Just say knowledge about this, about the hour, about the day of judgment is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one knows when is the hour. And I am only a clear warner. My words are clear. So no one knows when the hour will be. No one knows when the day of judgment will be. And that's why in Surah Al-A'raf, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yes, أَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي لَا يُجَلِّيهَا لِوَقْتِهَا إِلَّا هُ they ask you, oh Muhammad, when is the hour? When they ask you this question, just say, its knowledge is only with my Lord. None will reveal its time except him. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
concealed the time of the hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give this knowledge to people so that people would do more khair and more good deeds. They would do more worship, just preparing to, for that great day. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told people that, okay, the judgment will be on this time, on this day, on this uh, year, then they would they would not they would they would not be uh, energetic enough or they would not will to do good deeds until before it's time they will postpone everything until the it is the time that's close to the day of judgment then they will do it but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed that time did not reveal when is the day of judgment so that a, a person would not feel uh, would not feel proud and would not do the bad deeds would not would not do evil deeds so he always remembers death and he always fears that he while committing a sin then death will come and he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disobeying him so man would be always aware that I don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be not pleased with me. I want Allah to always be with, with, pleased with me. He, man, the good righteous people would always be on tawbah status, always looking and seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have always to remember that the command of the hour is not but a glance of an eye or even nearer. It's so close to us. We all know that death is the starting point of the day of judgment. Death does not differentiate between young and old, healthy and sick, man or woman boy or girl, when the hour of death comes, then there is no delay of a single second. The, the uh, non-believers will say, Ya Allah, now we, we realize that it is right now. Can, can we have, can, we can you delay it just a little bit so that we can, we can uh, um, do some good deeds? No, it's, it's just a word that will be said. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he specifies what time, what day a person will die, that, that date is fixed. This is something that will not be changed. So get ready. And as I just mentioned, remember that death is the starting point of the day of judgment. When someone dies, plus, there's nothing that he can do. Nothing that he can make up. That's it. I am only a warner who is talking to you clearly. The creed I, I call you to is clear. The path is straight. The, I, 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 I show you the, the way that you have to follow. Use your intellect. You know that this is good and this is bad. Just follow Follow your instinct. The, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides someone and he is a good person, that's not because he is a good person, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this blessing. So if you find yourself worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find yourself 
uh, fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find yourself following the right path, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most merciful who has guided you to do these good things. But when they see it, when they see it approaching, the faces of those who disbelieve will be distressed. And it will be said, this is that for which you used to belie. Zulfa means to get closer. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ means when the, when the paradise is brought nearer. So when Allah, when they, when they, when they uh, knew that uh, this, uh, that this is what uh, they, uh, when they when they realized that this is what they could do, that this is that the day of judgment is here, then they could not they could not do anything. The only thing that they remembered that they were alive, they died, they are resurrected, and now their faces. They are distressed. And they are, and, and that was because of the, the evil deeds of the bad deeds that they did. This is what used to belie. This is what you used to deny. On that day, crying will not save them. On that day, their wealth will not save them. Their offsprings will not save them. Today, in this life, you can do whatever you want. There is no, no uh, reckoning. But then, on the day of judgment, you cannot do anything. Your, your deeds will be scaled for you. Now you have a chance, but on the day of judgment, you have no chance. Now you can change the way that you are living. Now you can change the way that, of your worship. Now the, the, you can do a lot of things. You still have time, but later you cannot. The non-believer will, will be certain that what they used to belie is truth. So when, when those people, when those people used to uh, uh, see the, the, when the non-believers, <clears throat> when the non-believers see the the hellfire in with their own eyes it will be said to them this is what you used to belie this is what you used to ask the prophets to get it to get it fulfilled so you used to belie the day the day of judgment in dunya but it is truthful so you will see it in front of you. This is the eye of certainty. You cannot say that this is not real anymore. So all your claims, all what you said, everything that you thought of were just nothing. And the only thing that is left for you is torture, is punishment. And that's why, that's why their faces got distressed. That's why their faces turned black, 
That day faces will be radiant and shining and other faces will be black. Black because of being ashamed, of being humiliated. No one is going to save them from the torture, from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. Say, O Muhammad, <coughs> have you considered whether Allah should cause my death and those with me? Or have mercy upon us? Who can protect the, the disbeliever, the non-believers from the painful punishment? So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is saying to them, you have nothing to do with me. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to live, or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to die, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to have mercy on me and on my companions and everyone, then ask yourselves, who is going to protect the non-believers from, from the painful punishment that Allah has prepared for them? Who's going to save them from that torture? Save yourselves. Don't care about me. Don't care about my, my companions. We've always to remember that This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-An'am. And every soul earns not to blame except against itself. And no, no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. We used to say, okay, you do this, do this bad deed, and just say to Allah that so-and-so person is going to take the punishment for that deed. How come? How can they believe in that this is truthful? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, uh, is telling them these words just to warn, to warn them. If Allah wants to save me or save my companions, who is going to save you non-believers? So just prepare yourself for that day. Qul huwa rahman Ya Muhammad, tell them, Rahman. He is the most merciful. And we have believed in him. We depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely. Upon him we have relied. And you will come to know who is who it is that is in a clear error. So again, Allah is emphasizing on one important thing that He is telling people that there will be punishment for non-believers that he has prepared painful punishment for the non-believers. But then again, he says, who are Rahman? He gives hope. So no matter how much a person has sinned in his life, when he remembers who are Rahman, then that will give him so much hope. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to have mercy. And we said earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mercy and divided it into 100 portions. He descended just one portion to earth 
and he kept the 99 portions up in the sky. So with this 1% that is on earth, we see how people have mercy among each other, how people care for each other, how, how the animals care for their, uh, for their baby animals. So with this mercy that we have among us, all of it is just 1% of the 100 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. <clears throat> so just remember that Allah is merciful. And Allah shows mercy to both the believer and non-believer in both the dunya and the akhirah. He is Ar-Rahman by, by nature. But he shows extra mercy to those who believe. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا So with the non-believers, he shows extra mercy. So this mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved till the day after, then he is going to use it to save the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, did the longest sajda that he did ever, and he used to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the new ways and forms uh, of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, Allah told him, raise up, irfa ra'sak, sal tu'ata, ask your question and it will be fulfilled, it will be answered. He didn't ask anything for himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ummati, Ummati, Ya Allah, my nation, my nation. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will not sit in his pulpit of, of nur, of light on the day of judgment because he is worried about his ummah. He would be going here and there to, uh, from uh, hellfire to the uh, sirat, to, the, to, this, to this place, to that place, just to, to save his ummah. Even those who are thrown in hellfire, then he will argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he saves his ummah. So no one of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who, who says la ilaha illallah truthfully in his heart will stay in hellfire forever like those non-believers. He, they will be forgiven for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our beloved prophet. He loves us. The least we can do for him is to send salawat to him. Keep your word of salawat every day. Love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Know him. Read about him. Know that he will be your savior in the day of judgment with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the best of the, the best of the best of the best of the blessings that we have, that we are of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Thanks is for you, Allah. Thanks is suitable to the grace of your face and the greatness of your supreme authority. And with, with, it, with all the types of thanking you, Ya Allah, that we follow, that we say, with all the forms, we cannot praise you the way you deserve to be praised. Ya Allah, get us closer to you. The believer in this dunya 
is always happy. When he reads the Quran, he is happy. When he stands before the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he prays, he is happy. When he, when he realizes that he has raised righteous children, then he is happy. There are people who would pay millions and millions just to feel happiness, but they, they don't. Because happiness is something in, in the heart. You cannot buy. It's connected to the, uh, to the content of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person can, can make himself happy. A person would feel the real happiness when he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the blessings of being able to read the Quran. So when you have this feeling, just do more. Just get more. Do more of that because you will have <clears throat> happiness in, in this dunya for uh, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you. When you feel happy, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then get more at that time. When you are doing your word and you are, you feel connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel your heart is doing the word, you, it's not you, then try to do more. Take this opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no matter how much we talk about this, if someone did not taste the meaning, the real meaning of what I'm saying, they will still don't know what I'm talking about. If you, if you talk to someone who hasn't ever tasted honey and you tell him how sweet honey is, he will imagine it, but he won't know exactly what you are talking about. It's the same thing for the pleasure of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you wake up at night and everyone is sleeping, you are, you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You feel the closeness of yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take advantage of this time. There's no distractions. It's only you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do more. Feel it in your heart. When you feel it, it's a different, a different taste. And always remember that Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not benefit him. Disobeying him would not harm him. But worshipping is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his, to his servants. And disobeying is just uh, the um, oppression of people amongst themselves. Worshipping Allah is helping each other. So, Ya Allah, bi rahmatika nastaghith. We ask you, Ya Allah, we seek your aid through your mercy, Ya Allah. Qul huwa ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Ya Allah, إلهي برحمتك أستغيث فلا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين وأصلح لي شأني كله يا الله I seek aid through your mercy do not entrust me to my own self even for a blink of an eye and rectify all my affairs يا الله the most merciful and that's why when we want to do anything, we start with the name of Ar-Rahman. We say, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. 
And always remember that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كُلُّ عَمَلٍ لَا يَبْدَأُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ أَبْتَرْ أَبْتَرْ أَيْ مَقْتُوعَ Every action that does not start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is missing some reward. So say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, so that your deeds, everything will be easy for you. You will be doing you will be doing whatever you are doing with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say Bismillah Rahman Rahim so that what you are doing, you will get it by the force, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by your power. If, you, if Allah doesn't want something to happen, it will not happen, no matter how the ins and the jinn and every or everyone who is alive get together. It will not happen. Stop. And if Allah wants something to happen, it will happen in a blink of an eye. It will be kun fayakun. Qul huwa rahman He is the most merciful. So, as I said, out of his mercy, out of his being the most merciful, he has opened the door of Tawbah for everyone. He has opened the door of Tawbah for those who want to repent and to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave a chance for people as long as they are living. As long as it's, the, the, uh, the, uh, it's before the death time. So we are the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu kama yinbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik, ya Allah. We depend on you, ya Allah, in all our affairs. We depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he would, he, uh, during the happy times, we depend on him during sad times. We depend of, on him in ease. We depend on him in hardship. We don't ask help and support from people. No. We ask it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We depend on the most merciful, the Lord of the people. We believed in you, Ya Allah. We worship you, Ya Allah. We fulfill the orders, Ya Allah. All of this with your mercy. So when we are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the, the ease of the ease time, then he will be with us during hardship. So the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during hard times would do so much for us. It will uh, lessen the the pain that we pass through through this hardship, no matter what this hardship might be, and we are all going to be tested in this life. This is a life of tests. So Allah will make our pain less. Allah will make us stronger to 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 bear the burdens of the calamities to overcome the calamities. And Allah will give us the hope that after each night, a day will come. And so we have to have full tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to, have to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully. And depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fruit of Iman. When we have good Iman in our heart, then Allah will help us when we need that help. But for those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they haven't tasted the, the beauty of Iman. They haven't tasted what Imans mean. They will not feel the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would not know that they have to ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what it means 
فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين later on on the day of judgment you will know you will realize who is in a clear error that would be on the day of judgment that would be the day when the winners will be known and the losers will be known قل ارايتم ان اصبح ماؤكم غورا فمن ياتيكم بماء معين tell them ya muhammad if you considered if your water was to become sunken into the earth who would bring you flowing water allah rabbul alamin this is how we answer when we read this ayah who is going to get you flowing water no one but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if your water that you are using on this dunya gets sunk in the in the earth you cannot get it out of the earth and this is one of the weaknesses of you people what can you do you live on earth and you need water uh, in uh, in addition to other things but here this ayah specifically is talking about water so if if this water that you are using is being held and you cannot use water anymore you cannot get water out from deep deepest of the earth who can get you water who can get you water that you can see in, in your eyes who can get you water that you would drink from that you would uh, uh, water your trees your plants your you would give to your cattle to to uh, to everyone one of the uh, one of the non believers answered this uh when sayyid muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this ayah one of the non believers said okay we would get our axes and uh, our uh, machines or machines and we would dig and we would get the water when he woke up the next day the eyes in his uh, the, the water in his eyes dried and he became blind he was making fun of sayyid muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was making fun of the quran so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the water of his eyes away so even this water that's in our eyes even these tears who who gave it to us who who gave it to us and who kept it there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful so ya allah we thank you We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. We thank you for the blessings that we know and we don't know. We thank you for the blessings that we have taken for granted. We are walking, we are uh, driving, we are uh, swimming, we are doing everything that we do normally, but we forgot that these are all blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the minute one anyone just fell down break his uh, foot and uh, is in a cast then he would realize oh my god there's so many things i cannot do the same way i used to do when i was healthy then he would realize the importance of each and every single blessing that Allah has given us so no one no one would get us fresh flowing water except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't it shameful that Allah has given us all these blessings and then people would worship someone other than Allah people would fear someone other than Allah you feel people fearing each others but they don't fear Allah people are worshiping this dunya and not worshiping Allah they they are doing their best to collect them as much wealth as they can in this dunya 
but they forget to stand two, two minutes when, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a prayer that they don't talk about anything else inside themselves except that they remember they are in with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my dear friends, just get prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get prepared to hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. Ya Allah, make us happy that we are going to meet you. Make us longing that this meeting. Get us prepared for this meeting, Ya Allah. It's your mercy, Ya Allah, that helped us to worship you. It's your mercy that helps, help, helps us, that we want you to be pleased with us. It's, our, it's your mercy, Ya Allah, that helps us to, to do good deeds. Ya Allah, we ask you, husn al-khatima, the best of endings, Ya Allah. With your mercy, Ya Allah, we want you to make us strong enough to overcome all the blessings, all the, uh, the, the things that we face in this dunya that, were, that they are arrowed at us just to keep us just a little bit away from the path. With your mercy, we will be on the path of of As-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. With your mercy, Ya Allah, we will love Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With your mercy, Ya Allah, we will follow Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of judgment to the, to the place that we will be with him, Ya Rasulullah. We will be with Rasulullah in the day of judgment because we love him. And, and he said, a person will be resurrected with whom he loves. We witness, Ya Allah, that we love you. We love Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to be with him and we want to have the blessings of meeting and seeing you on the day of judgment, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. With this, we come to the end of our session of uh, talking about the tafsir of Surah Al-Tabarak, uh, Surah Al-Mulk. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. We ask him to accept us. We ask him to make us of his righteous, righteous servants, whom he says, radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله we will start a new series of تفسير of سورة الكهف uh, and uh, it will be announced إن شاء الله through MCC بإذن الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته